Let's get this over with. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 23, The Hooffields and the Colts. Okay, just to let you guys have a little bit of a heads up here, neither me or Ember really enjoyed this episode that much. So if you don't want to hear us talk about it in kind of a negative way over like the next like 10 minutes or so, you can go watch one of our other episodes where we talk about things better. I'll probably put a link up on the screen here or write one of those new little box things in the corner that you can just hit the little eye for. Or they could just turn the volume off and watch you draw. That too. If you happen to enjoy us just talking about episodes, whether it's negative or not, please continue listening. So why don't we start with you? This was painful. From the moment I saw the episode title to the moments the credits rolled. <laughs> I don't think I've paused this much since Games Ponies Play. <laughs> uh, yeah. Very negative reaction for me, too. I was just pausing it constantly as well, because... I knew how things were going pretty much from the start, and I actually kind of wanted, not that I usually want this, but I kind of wanted Twilight to actually fail in this mission, because sometimes friendship can't solve a problem, <laughs> especially feuds like this. I mean, the one this is based on, I believe, is still going on. <laughs> and was over something much, much more serious. Not that a children's show needs to be overly serious. Mm -hmm. But it would have been a good lesson that sometimes you can't solve problems. And that may have been a good thing for the castle map to teach her that sometimes you can't solve problems. You have to know when you've lost and move on. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's a topic that children's shows have dealt with before. Disney's Recess had an episode where the very popular kid TJ found a kid who didn't like him and worked to try to win the kid over. The kid thought everything he was shown was cool, but he still didn't like TJ. Wasn't anything personal. They just weren't friends. And that was okay. Though I hear some people didn't quite like that episode either, at least the way it was handled. Can't please everyone. Yep. This time we weren't pleased. Yes, very not pleased, because I didn't really even find anything redeemable about the episode overall because I saw where everything was going. I saw what they were doing. I knew Fluttershy was going to be the key to everything. I mean, I was even kind of disappointed in the fact that we didn't get kind of a, as it were, Fluttershy hulk up moment of her shouting to everyone, stop! <laughs> what about the animals? And everyone would just turn to her, freezing on their own, and going, the quiet one talked? Because <laughs> that would have been a much better end there to me other than Twilight going, I'm going to use my magic to freeze everyone, and suddenly have a problem with freezing this many people. Which she shouldn't have, and basically that was Twilight's only contribution, because nothing in her book of research or any of the ideas that she tried worked. So technically, Twilight failed by herself, but they succeeded as a team, except that Twilight wasn't really needed because Fluttershy is the one who can talk to animals, Fluttershy is the one who noticed the animals suffering on both sides, and probably would have spoken to the animals while she was, you know, in the valley away from both feuding clans, and gotten the whole answer, and would have spoke up for the animals whether or not she could get the Hooffields and the Colts to hold still because she's Fluttershy. She probably could have just used the stare on them. I agree with you that the episode would definitely be a lot stronger if it was just Fluttershy. I mean, even the way things were going up to this point, we're kind of hinting that the next tree map episode was going to be Fluttershy by herself because they were completely excluding Twilight. So Twilight didn't really add anything to the episode as you stated. I was like, why did they even put her here? They didn't need her. Fluttershy could have done this all on her own. <laughs> I can think of two reasons. One, because of all the excitement Twilight has over finally being called, so to be able to fit in all those jokes and her overpreparedness, and also to have the plot point of all of them have been now called by the Table Tree Castle map, so the next thing will be even bigger. Mm-hmm. I also think a couple episodes were actually written after this episode was written because the way she was stating 
this is Twilight, by the way, the way she was stating things at the beginning of the episode, to me, felt like she was hinting that these things will happen in the future, not that they happened in the past. See, and I read it the opposite way, is that, oh, we've already dealt with these problems, so we know what to do. Hmm. So, what did you find positive about this episode, just to see if we can find anything? <laughs> I liked Twilight in the beginning, her super excitedness and overpreparedness because she's been stuck sitting on the sidelines and feeling so left out and feeling, you know, she has this responsibility as the princess of friendship and doesn't feel like she's fulfilling that responsibility. <laughs> I like the fact that Fluttershy has an animal book club. <laughs> that too. Also, the, the book club still went on after she left, which means that the animals actually enjoy the book club and aren't just doing it to humor Fluttershy. Mm -hmm. ah, and I think this goes back to some other points, and we may even have said it before, but I think Fluttershy was the best part of this episode. Pretty much. The overall flow of the episode was very predictable. I even had a math problem like this feud, where, okay, one side can do one thing, the other side can do something different. Yeah, they each need each other. That was actually a high school math problem for me. <laughs> uh, I got to say, this episode reminded me of a particular episode of Avatar, which I think the episode of Avatar handled it better, basically because of the way Aang solved the problem. Uh, a thousand years ago? Wait a minute, I know these two guys! This is how this happened! It was really this! Oh, and it really is a stupid thing we were fighting over. Okay! And no one can dispute Aang of what happened, because else lived that long ago. Except that people did live that long ago, and it was only a hundred years, not a thousand, because as you recall, Boomy is still alive. Oh, sorry. I was thinking a thousand because we're in My Little Pony territory here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everything seems to be intervals of a thousand. Well, it's a convenient number. And in Avatar, the tribes had more differences between them, you know, in overall behaviors and attitudes. That Hooffields and McColts Basically, their differences were only in their abilities. They lived in a similar area. They seemed to have strong family bonds, considering the whole clan on both sides is committed to the fight. And additional laziness points for making all the clan members the same color. <laughs> Just so that it would be easy to tell them apart during the battle. This is not a football game. And we have very clearly delineated that ponies within the same family, even immediate blood relatives, can be of very differing colors. And something else that just hit me. Based on the original story, there was only two males. Where did everyone else come from? <laughs> I'm thinking it's something along the lines of people saw the pretty picture in the book Twilight found and went there, let's go to this pretty picture. Oh look, there's someone here. <laughs> And things kind of built up that way, but that still really doesn't explain, you know, okay, if everyone is related, then yeah, do we really want to go there? <laughs> uh. And that was a stupid resolution to the feud. Just because their ancestors cared about the animals doesn't mean that they do. They obviously didn't, considering all the rescuing Fluttershy had to do during the battles. Mm, and speaking of the rescuing, um, the first time she rescued the mice from the cannon, I was uh, thinking that one of the others would be like, Spy! She stopped us from shooting this pumpkin! Which didn't happen. Yes, because apparently no one noticed her take the pumpkin because they still put the plunger down the cannon barrel. Yeah, I'm thinking they would have noticed when they fired it and nothing came out. So, as we said at the beginning of this, you can tell we're... We didn't like this episode that much. More like, at all. Why did the McColt family patriarch have to be a short, angry male? Are you trying to do a Napoleon stereotype? And why did Ma Hooffield have to be a cranky old pony with an overbite? And let's not forget, you know, wearing pots on our heads. I know that's a very Johnny Appleseed thing, and they were on the growing team. But still, so many negative stereotypical portrayals. And not even done in a fun, comedic way like the Swamp Benders, or the traveling band in Avatar. Ah, and that suddenly reminded me of something else I noticed. Apparently that puppet show pony from Inspiration Manifestation seems to have a lot of relatives, because I see them using his basic form a lot in a lot of episodes. Well, they are trying to diversify the pony 
population. And the easiest way to do that is take the forms that we've come up with and do recolors. Well, I hope you enjoyed our rant, I mean thoughts, on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 5, Episode 23, Hooffields and McCults. Thanks for listening. If you like Lux's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really enjoy listening to us blather on? Try subscribing. Also, comment sections there. Please be nice. Really, really like Lux's art? He does take commissions and also has a Patreon. All links in the description.